hello everyone and welcome to captions for video um we're actually re doing this video this uh video just because so much changed since um we did the first one um so uh yeah we're um neil harrod beck and phil mcintyre uh, from Natspec Techability and we'll take you through the main features on captions for video um, and give you an idea of how to do that on different platforms. And the good news is some of them are easier and we've added some different options for you as well, um, including social media. Okay, so first of all, um, talk a little bit about why we use captions. Um, there are more than 100 empirical studies um, that document that captioning a video improves comprehension, attention, and memory for the video. Um, not only that, it also benefits uh, hearing adults, hearing children um, learning to read, learning a second language, um, and, and that's beyond the kind of obvious um, kind of disabilities who this might benefit. Um, we've got the link in there on the article of that. Um, so what are captions? Captions are a text version of the speech, and non-speech audio information need to understand the content. And they're displayed within the media player and they're synchronized with the audio. Um, so yeah, it's important that any non-speech audio, um, any noises in the video that give you clues and cues as to what's going on are also uh, captioned. Um, and this one I found really interesting because it gives us an idea of how important it is for learning resources. Um, actually uh, JISC looked into virtual learning environments that different uh, colleges had and they found that the issues accessing the VLA on mobile devices or difficulty for students requiring additional support isn't always about the VLA's lack of ability but often about the content within so it's thinking about what we um, create and in this um, circumstances about video so uh, we're going to cover today um, is uh, we're going to think about is your session live or recorded? Uh, what platform are you using? Are there multiple speakers? Will you be playing video clips? And will you need language support? Um, and on the right, um, there's a useful diagram that I, I don't think I fully understood until I saw this written out. Um, is that captions assume the viewer cannot hear? And subtitles assume the viewer doesn't understand the language, um, just if you hear, hear those, those terminology. Um, so most of the captions are closed captions, and that means they can be hidden or shown, so you get the choice over it. Um, or open captions are always displayed and cannot be turned off. Um, so it's worth thinking about whether actually captions could be a distracting factor for some um and a good feature for others in which case closed captions are the ones that you can turn on and off um so what do we need to be in place before this all starts we need uh, trained staff who know to how to do this in platforms it's always good to have a practice run through first um i know that's what i was doing today a little bit before the webinar just testing that things haven't changed and that things were the same as before uh, we need an awareness of needs um, so what do your learners need and how do they need the resources presented to them? Connectivity is really important because if you um, don't have the connection, uh, then you won't be able to actually um, see the visual clues and cues that you need. Uh, equipment wise, we're looking really at um, a quality microphone. So. Uh, in this case, I'm not wearing a headset today. Um, I'm not really expecting any ambient noise. And uh, I've tested my mic before and it's fairly clear. Uh, Phil's actually using a headset today um, and that'll be a noise cancelling headset. So any noise in his environment will be filtered out. It's because Phil's got kids and a cockerel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have either of those uh, things. I'm the, only noise, I'm the only noisy thing in this household. Well, so, that's uh, fine. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, thinking about your equipment and having a working platform, uh, again, it sounds simple, but test it before you use it. Um, some key questions that you want to think about, um, I've pulled these from the National Disability Authority, make your websites more accessible. They cover more than just videos. So they're a really good resource. And if you look into audit, 
what you're doing and what you're using. They ask some really important questions to, to test that. So, um, and a lot of the accessibility resources can actually in themselves be quite inaccessible because there's so much detail there. I like these really simple questions because they really get you thinking about it on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, the first one is, have you provided a suitable text equivalent for everything that's not text? The second one here, can learners get all the important information from your videos and audio, even if they can't hear them? And if you're answering those questions positively, there's a good chance that you're on your way there. So um, we've got a little bit of a difference between recorded video and slides so um, and unrecorded. So for recorded video, um, because you've got the time and because you're able to, there's, there's an expectation that you will have captions there there will be audio description in the video or a transcription detailing the visual and audio information and a transcription is a um, is text outlining what's what's happening in the video and what's being said and it's important that those are accessible live delivery um, we are expecting uh, video to be captioned and audio ideally real-time captions um, and it's more challenging with live delivery, um, but it is possible as we will be able to show. I think it's fair to say as well, one of the major differences between those is if you're, um, if you're making captions for recorded content, you can also fulfill one of the, Neil's simple questions of all of the audio content being captured. So um, sound effects or noises in the background auto transcription, um, auto captioning, sorry, isn't going to be able to know when a, a dog barks, if that's part of a video or something like that. And that can be really critical to the understanding for the individual um, who's receiving that as to whether there's a, a scream in the background and that's why someone turns around or that kind of thing. Yeah, I want to know what resources you're making where someone's screaming in the background. <laughs> I don't know why I came up with that. Let's stick with dog barking. <laughs> I like it. It's very dramatic. You've missed Halloween, sadly. So that's, uh, yeah, not, not the right timing. Um, so as we said, with the microphone, uh, you can have inbuilt or external. Uh, noise cancelling is really useful to have. Um, think about your computer, your phone or tablet having software updates. Phil's actually really good at reminding us all before we're going to do a conference or something like that update your Zoom platform, update, you know, kind of Teams, make sure you've got all your Windows updates, things like that um, are really important because that's where new features are brought in. Um, and to get the lighting right, um, I've, I've managed to contribute with three different light sources, four, four if you include the window today, <laughs> so there should be a nice balanced, um, balanced light. And why that's important is because when people are using captions the best way that you can be communicating is for your uh, for people to be able to see your lips reading to be able to see the text on the screen and to be able to hear the text clearly it just gives us the best chance possible of communicating what we're saying so even though that isn't directly to do with captioning it, it will make your videos more accessible okay so uh yeah um, this is an example of a headset that i've got that's a plantronics headset um, and yeah, it's worth just thinking whether it's comfortable, is it noise cancelling, is it one ear or two, um, which obviously you can either completely drown out the background noise or you can still pay attention. Um, and is it hard wearing as well? So sometimes it's worth spending a little bit more just for one that's going to last. Okay, um, Phil, would you like to go through Zoom? Yeah, sure. Um... This is one of the updates which you may or may not be aware of since the last time we did this webinar. Um, the last time we did it, we came up with lots of workarounds to get cap live captioning in Zoom. And thankfully now we don't need to. They've partnered with um, um, a company called otter.ai who do some really good live transcription. Um, and Zoom have partnered with them and integrated that into the Zoom platform. So now you can just, within a meeting, the host needs to turn it on. That's always the tricky thing that people forget. The host turns on automatic captioning, and then each attendee will get the ability to be able to um, turn that captioning on or off as they, as they require. Um, 
So um, you can also, there's nice ways of, if you want live captioning from a human, um, that's going to be more accurate than the auto captioning, um, that you can tie, um, tie that in and have a, um, a third party dialing in. So we've used in the past um, AI media as a company, but there's a few companies that do it who can dial in and their captioner will get um will will be able to dial in and um and and type the captions for you um that this will auto auto um automatically also transcribe um your cloud recording so if you've recorded the session you'll also get a transcription and that's using the same um the same uh engine to do that um zoom doesn't support the um, uploading caption files to the cloud to be able to support their video, unfortunately, but you can use other tools that we'll think about in a minute with syncing it to YouTube, etc. Um, Teams is, is slightly different. You're less dependent on um, hosts turning it on. When you're in Teams, you'll get an option. Again, you generally need to drop it down from the menu. I personally find all the Menus in Teams are a bit annoying um, and obstructive, but um, generally it's the three dots and then you'll get the option to CC, turn on live captions. Um, and that works very well as well. The, the auto transcription behind that seems to be very good. It's using Microsoft's AI um, and that's, that's really quite successful. If you haven't, if you can't see the live captions when you're in a Teams meeting, then you might need to update Teams and that should do it. Um, but I have also heard of um, some education establishments who it's, it ended up being blocked and they needed to talk to their IT team to get it enabled, which shouldn't really be happening in 2021. But again, it's something to consider. If you've done the update and it hasn't worked, talk to your IT team. But again, that's a really, you know, again, just in the last year, they've really um, spun that up very quickly and, and enabled it, um, which has been obviously of benefit given we've all been learning online. I think I've actually got a video of me demonstrating. Yeah, this is you doing it, isn't it? They are, yeah. So uh, let me just reshare it just to make sure that I've got the sound on. Thank you. Hello, we're going to show you how to use captions in Microsoft Teams. So once you're on a call with someone, go up to the More Actions button, three dots. And then go down to Turn on Live Captions. Then you should see them appear along the bottom of the screen, alongside with the speaker's name and picture. Okay, so that's Microsoft Teams. Um, and um, Gazi's made a really good point there in the chat that just because you've got a, I think this is what you're saying, Gizzy, Gizzy correct me if I'm wrong, that the just because you've got a transcript doesn't mean it makes sense after the meeting. Most of the time, the captions and the transcript might make sense when they're with the things that are being described, but to try and make sense of that after the meeting sometimes is gibberish. So that's that's a good point. Don't assume understanding just because it's written down. Uh, yeah, we um, we had a discussion of, uh, as to whether to include Microsoft Stream. Um, I'd be curious, actually, if, if any of you use this uh, platform. Um, we know a few do this. We wanted to include it. Um, they've actually got, um, within the options, um, you can uh, auto-generate a caption file um, and you can also upload um, a file. Um, so the auto-generated ones will be, um, you know, have, have only a very base level of accuracy. Um, so if you, um, if we're looking for better accuracy, then you'd need to be uploading that CRT file, which we'll be covering later on. Um, and yeah, because he said, um, it's usually pretty good and reliable and like the inline transcription a lot. Uh, that was Jubrish post meeting. That was the Microsoft Teams, and then we used Stream prior to Teams recordings going to OneDrive for business. 
Yes, that's right. We, I think, um, I think now Teams is in more people use that than than Stream. Yeah, I think basically Microsoft are trying to cut out that piece of the joint, not having it going to Stream, just going to OneDrive. Yeah. Okay. Uh, PowerPoint Online. Um, so this requires Windows Ten. Um, it requires Microsoft PowerPoint for Microsoft uh, for um, Office three six five. Uh, we've got the version number on there, which is 16.0.11601.20178. We can always write that in the chat if you need to. Um, and uh, yeah, in slideshow, uh, you can tick always use subtitles, and that's quite um, an easy one. So that's in the in the slideshow tab along the top, and you can all tick always use subtitles. Or you can, in the slideshow view during the presentation, you can use the slideshow um, like, uh, so you can use the cap, um, subtitle um, icon, which is a, a circle with a square with some um, kind of distant text in it. Um, and in presenter mode as well, uh, presenter view, there's also that same similar icon there. Um, and we've got a link in the slide just taking you through how to do that. and. This is only, so I, I wouldn't use this if I was using Microsoft Teams or if I was using Zoom, but if I was on a platform that maybe didn't have captioning or some kind of, something like this, this is a good backup option. Um, it's always good to have a backup option where you can um, fall, fall back to. Um, it's great for, for live presentations. You know, if you've, if you've got something on a big screen and you still want to have live captioning, um, then it's great. With the same criteria, obviously, you definitely, if you're in a, a live room, you definitely need a headset mic, I would say. Um, and yeah, um, good point, um, because you, if you've got a platform that doesn't do captions like Blackboard Collaborate, then you can um, use that for your online delivery. Um, the restriction you have that I find with it is then if somebody else speaks during the presentation, if you're doing a group um, discussion or something, it's PowerPoint then doesn't pick up the other speakers. Um, you can make it by turning your speakers up and things like that, but you're getting a whole load of other, another world of pain if you do that. So really for solo presentations, I think it works very well, either live or online. But um, uh, if you're doing a discussion, it's never gonna pick up and that's when you need your platform to be able to do it. Um, now I'm going to mention desktop. The, um, they've actually stopped supporting uh, Microsoft. Sorry, have, have stopped supporting this translator plugin. But I've, I'm asking them, and will continue to ask them uh, to bring it back because people using um, the old version of PowerPoint, this is a really good plugin. Um, so this is more for those who already have it, or if in future we can get Microsoft to um, re-release this. Um, so there's a link to the translator plugin. Um, and also we've got a, a video there that shows you how to record your slides and put them out, which can be quite useful. Um, but this plugin essentially means that you can, um, you can start subtitles and it uses uh, Microsoft Translator. So you can also broadcast this um, in one language, but output to multiple different languages, um, which is quite useful. And uh, this, as with the other PowerPoint, um, slide, it, it learns from your slides as to what you're talking about. So if I were worried that it was not going to pick up certain terminology, what I could do is in this, in one of the slides at the end, I could include some extra vocabulary there uh, that will actually make it more likely that it'll pick out those words um, and increase the accuracy. So as I'm if I was using uh, PowerPoint right now, it would be learning from the materials in, in the PowerPoint slides. And the, the, the top tip is to um, do that in advance because if you've got a lot of content in your PowerPoint presentation, it takes can take 10 minutes, 15 minutes sometimes to process it all. So don't do it just before you're gonna present. <laughs> do it, finish your presentation, display it once at home. So it will do that learning and then um, it, it will be ready to go. Otherwise, you'll be stuck while it's processing all that learning. Yeah, that's it. Um, so Google Slides, um, it's accessible as well um, 
from uh, yeah, if you go to after you've pressed present, um, you can go to CC and captions on the toolbar, um, which is yeah down below there. Uh, it requires using the group the Chrome browser on PC, and there's a shortcut of Control Shift C. Uh, currently, that's only available in US English. Uh, also, we've got Google Hangouts, which is the kind of main uh, video um, conferencing tool for Google. Uh, and again, it's built in. Uh, you can either turn on captions at the bottom of the screen, uh, which is again a CC icon, um, or you can hit uh, double dot and more to get to it. So that'll, that'll appear different in, in different people's browsers. Um, if you record a video meeting, the captions aren't recording and don't appear to appear when you play the recording. So that's that's important to um, to know that it, it isn't an option for you to put something out uh, as post-production. Okay, uh, Phil, do you want to talk a little bit about options for recorded video? Yeah, um, obviously this gets a bit more complicated than just turn it on, click the, click the closed caption option. Um, your primary and most reliable um, way to get captions onto your recorded video is to pay somebody, pay an external company. Um, um, I'm not sure, where's this quote from, Neil? The, um, is this the um, same, sorry, it's the same resource that you had up earlier, isn't it? But basically transcribing an audio file is fairly difficult and takes quite a bit of time for people who don't have the software and skill for it. That's um, is an interesting quote, having done quite a few transcriptions for video, it can be time consuming. The people that are doing it day in, day out are audio typists. Um, and often it probably depends on how much you're paying them and how much time they're taking, but they'll often ask for a context and a vocabulary um, that will apply to that. And obviously if it's from, um, if it's for very specialist courses, like scientific courses, then you would need a, a specialist um, to be able to make sure they're getting all the language correct. Um, but what you can do is use automatic captions as a starting point. Um, really, the, the rule of thumb is if you're creating a recording that is used, that is maybe a, a recording of a lecture that's only going to go out once and is used for the students who couldn't make it, then automatic captions are acceptable. They may not be perfect, but they're acceptable. Likewise, with something um, like a live uh, session, the automatic captions are, are, are all that you can do generally. But if you're putting up a resource that's going to be there for a long time, um, and it's a teaching resource and hosted on your VLE, then it needs to be have accurate captions, and that needs someone to, to make it happen. So uh, next slide, please, Neil. Um, so there's several ways that you can do this yourself if you don't want to or can't afford to pay an external company. Um, and one starting point is this software, Otter AI. It's not really a software, sorry, it's an online service. Um, and we use this for processing our webinars. And basically you pay a subscription, it's about $100 a year. Um, and then you can upload your video that you've recorded onto Otter AI and it is um, pretty accurate at transcribing it. Um, and you can try it out if you want with a free basic version. Um, what the paid for version gives you is A, the ability to be able to um, upload video. The, the free version just um, gives you a live transcription. Um, but you can upload your video with a paid version and you get a decent amount of storage. Also, what you can do with the paid version is preload your vocabulary. So I do this a lot for words like techability, people's names, um, anything that might be happening in the webinar. Before I upload the video, I bung in a load of vocabulary that I know it's going to um, need to pick up. And then it's much more accurate and you have to do less editing later on. Um, but it's a really powerful tool and it's really highly accurate. And this is what's powering the Zoom captioning currently as well. Uh, next slide, please, Neil. Uh, 
Um, Somehow got two uh, Microsoft streams in. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, this is because it's also relevant to this as well, isn't it? Uh, uh, yeah. um, you can also generate. So once streams, you've uploaded a video to stream, um, it will auto caption it. Um, and it takes time, just like all of these things do. But um, it, it will process that and an auto caption, um, sorry, auto transcribe it. Um, and it, because it's on stream, it will then link it to the video. But this is a bit like, um, sorry, Neil, next slide too. Um, the YouTube auto captioning that it's not 100% accurate. Um, you can upload your video to YouTube, let it do its thing and you'll get captioning, but it won't be perfect. And it won't be enough to, for you to be able to use as that teaching resource that we mentioned. Um, but what you can do with YouTube is you can upload a transcript to your video. So you don't have to have the timings in it. You can just, if you've typed out, it's pretty easy if you've got say a two minute long video that you want to um, caption. It's quite easy to type out the spoken content um, and then save that as a text file, a .txt file. Then you can upload that to YouTube next to your video and it will auto sync your caption, your transcript, sorry, to the video and make it into captioning. Um, and this is where it's now highly accurate because if you've checked it and you know that all the words are correct in your transcript, all that YouTube's doing now is picking up on keywords and putting them in the right place. Um, so if you don't have a transcript, type it out, use something like Otter to transcribe and then correct it. Um, and then you need to, once you've uploaded it, make sure next to your video, you turn off the auto captioning and turn on your uploaded version. So it's a little bit of a faff, but once you've done it a couple of times, um, it's, it can be quite a quick way to do it. If you're using something like Otter to process it, or even you might use Stream to process it. So you've, that's doing the most of the work. You edit it so it's accurate, and then you can upload it and get it to sync it. And it normally takes, I don't know, anything up to an hour to auto sync to the video. Sometimes it's loads quicker. Okay, Neil. Um, you can also, if you want to, to YouTube, upload um, something that is a timed caption file. So if you are able to, you can do this from Otter as well. If you want, you can download it as an SRT. Um, I've not had much success with it. Neil's had more success. But um, you can, if you've got a captioned file with the timings in it, you can upload that to YouTube and it will just sync straight away. It will sort out the timings for you. Um, and this is just a, a list of um, the basic file types. Different platforms have recognized different um, file types for captions, but almost without fail, all of them recognize SRT or SBV. Is that correct, Neil, in your experience? I think I've, I've found SRT is, is definitely the, the predominant one. Yeah, there's, there's, um, there's some platforms that only accept SRT and don't accept others. So, yeah, definitely go for SRT. If in doubt, SRT. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Um, or VTT, and... says, says Gizzy. Um, ah, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know about VTT. We're obviously out of date now. It's the modern SRT. Tell us about that one, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we, sorry, we mentioned Otter already repeatedly because it's such a useful tool. Um, and so this is just uh, um, a highlight of what we've already said. Um, but yeah, bear in mind for all those extra features, you do need to pay, but it isn't stupid money. Um, it is about $100 a year. Um, for that license. Okay, um, we've got some options uh, for captioning services as well. Um, Caption Ed is the uh, one that you can see on the right hand side. Um, we've also got AI Media and uh, just in case those don't cover the fit the bill, uh, we've got um, an article there on uh, Tech Radar's best transcription services. Um, the best thing to do really is just to have an idea of what features you need in it. 
um, and then contact the companies and just see if, if they'll meet those needs. The advantages of um, a lot of these are that you can uh, you can often tie into um, other platforms um, and not be reliant on using different pieces of software for different platforms um, and, and have it all built in. Uh, if there's demand for it, then we can always look at reviewing um, a few different post production transcription services. But for most people, I, I kind of see that you'll be using the um, the core ones that we've mentioned. I think it's really hard to compare as well um, because they obviously all all provide a, a similar service, but you would need to rep replicate the same delivery or the same conference uh, running both transcription services alongside each other and then check for accuracy. But um, I'm sure that um, each each company will have details on the website about their levels of accuracy. And again, it's it's contextual to me. If you need a high level of accuracy, you need a human being doing it. And if that's, especially if that's for live content, then, um, you know, if you're doing a, a medical conference or something, you need someone with the vocab and the ability to be able to get those accurate captions. It's not good enough to have the auto transcription for something like that. Um, so I've just, um, I've put together some resources on how to do these things on different social media platforms. Um, especially a lot of students these days access these things. So it's quite useful to know a, how to view the videos that do have subtitles or captions and uh, B, how to edit your resources so that they're available. I know um, lots of uh, schools and colleges, even if they don't put out uh, resources that are designed for education, they do put out promotional materials and things like that. And there's an expectation that those should be accessible as well. Um, so for Facebook, um, you can go, once you've uploaded your video, um, you can go to the dots and you can, um, that mean um, the options. You can then click edit video. Uh, you then go to an edit um, button that, I, that was quite hard to find actually, <laughs> um, but it's tucked away at the top left of the video. Um, and then under that, you've got an add ca captions options where you can add uh, captions. So it only allows you to add .srt files um, in this particular one. So a little bit fiddly, but hopefully that should um, that should give you the option. Um, and then once you're viewing those videos, there'll be a, a CC option um, at the bottom of the video to turn on or off. Um, so look out for videos that you see on, um, on your social media platforms and other platforms and just see if they have set that CC option um, on Facebook and if they're accessible. Um, for Instagram, um, Instagram rolled out um, automatic captions, um, which is fantastic to see mainstream companies doing these kind of features. Um, of course, this is an example where it's useful for people with disabilities, but it's also useful for people who can't have the sound on. Um, and uh, yeah, they're saying that it will be available in 16 languages to start with um, and that they'll be expanding this to more surfaces and countries. Um, but first of all, you need to go to, if you click on your own profile, then you go to settings, there's account settings within there, and then with, within your account settings, there's captions. So once you click captions, um, it makes it um, quite easy uh, that you can just turn them straight on. Um, and yeah, you'll have captions in your Instagram videos. Um, I've also done TikTok as well, um, very popular platform at the moment and actually found this one the most accessible um, and easy to use captioning um, because there's no having to go into settings and turning it on. It's just built into the platform um, by design, which is great. Um, on the right hand side of the menu, after you've recorded your video and gone to the next step, it'll give you a captions option on the right hand side. This will take you through to another screen um, and it will show you what the captions will look like. Um, it also gives you an editable um, text field at the bottom. So if you, you notice any mistakes or it hasn't picked up any particular terms, you can edit it in the platform itself. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't know how accessible TikTok was in this form. <laughs> um, so uh, to contrast that as well, um, we've got Twitter and 
I've um, maybe I'm, I'm missing something um, with this, but but Twitter does not seem to have any easily accessible ways of um, captioning your videos built into the platform itself. Of course, you can use the ways that we've said before by going to another company. Um, but Twitter are saying that they that you can only access these closed captions um, through Media Studio. And then if you check how do you get permission to access Media Studio, um, access to Media Studio is only given on an invite only basis. Um, if you do not have access to Media Studio, then reach out to your account manager. So the fact that it's an account manager means it seems to be a business option rather than something that, that anyone can access. I think it um, might be a, a, a blue tick option. Uh, just, yeah. The starting point okay. is possibly to have a blue tick. And then, um, yeah. I mean, of course, the other way around it is if you've created your video with captions and then you upload it to, to Twitter and hard code, the, the captions on but it's by no means automatic in or yeah. as easy as say TikTok it is yeah and then then it's open captions which can't be turned on and off as well um which aren't always the most accessible. no exactly yeah yeah and um, so we're coming to the end of this uh, webinar now um we've included a few other sources in in the um slides that we find useful um there's uh the captions and subtitles section of the web accessibility initiative that a lot of um is the kind of baseline kind of standard that you want to be working for for materials. Um, there's also a really good article on which video conferencing tools are most accessible. Um, if you've got any questions, then feel free to put them in the chat. Um, and yeah, um, email us if you've got any other questions, uh, techability at natspec.org.uk or follow us on Twitter at tech underscore ability one. Um, and yeah, be sure to check out our other um, upcoming webinars and I hope that's been helpful. Thanks everyone. Cheers.